Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and apparently Kotaku is trying to get in on some of that sweet, sweet baby ink traffic. They wrote an article defending sweet baby ink. Now, for those of you who don't know what sweet baby ink is, they are basically a DEI focused consulting firm in Canada that has had their fingers in many, many AAA titles that have failed spectacularly as of late. And there is a list being curated on Steam right now that is well over 100,000 followers on it, I, I believe, uh, by a, a person in Brazil. And they've tried to get this person canceled. They've tried to get that list removed. Uh, but basically, gamers are deciding they don't want anything to do with Sweet Baby Inc. Um, you know, they've been involved in everything from Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, to Starfield, to Spider-Man 2, to the Saints Row reboot, uh, Alan Wake 2, lots of major titles. So we're going to talk about uh, Kotaku standing for them, because of course they are, because Kotaku is about as anti-gamer as you can get. Kotaku is a horrible publication, and they've been antagonizing gamers for uh, at least a decade, if not more. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about some of the stuff the founder of Sweet Baby Inc. is saying. And this whole thing has just blown up into what looks to be like a another flare-up of Gamergate, kind of like a, a hemorrhoid, I guess. But uh, yeah, I thought all of this conversation, I'm going to call it a conversation, I thought all of this stuff was kind of winding down with Hogwarts Legacy because gamers spoke up and people spoke with their wallets and it didn't matter how many Kotakus or Polygons or the gamers tried to shame people out of buying Hogwarts Legacy, it still wound up being the best-selling game of 2023. So the more that outlets like Kotaku and the gamer and Polygon try to say that Sweet Baby Inc. is A-OK, -okay, the more likely gamers are to run the other way. See, it kind of rhymes, right? So we're going to talk about this a little bit more. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys geeky sitting this one out again reminder this is coming from kotaku uh which is a joke among gamers at this point uh kotaku which is failing miserably on youtube look at their views god look at their views this is terrible they're lucky if they can break ten thousand views in a day you know uh they've been laying people off at kotaku for a while now and everybody hates Kotaku. Even people on the left, I think, are starting to hate Kotaku. I remember MAGFest was mocking them because Kotaku called them out for their COVID policies. And apparently they were doing everything right at MAGFest. But Kotaku was like, how very dare you have any convention during a pandemic? And they're like, well, we're doing everything we're supposed to do. I mean, people don't have to come. And uh, that was the whole big thing. Kotaku is the outlet that I believe got Troy Levitt, uh, one of the lead developers on Hogwarts Legacy, uh, pushed out. And uh, lucky him, the game went on to do to do 23 million plus in sales. Uh, thank you, Kotaku. Now Kotaku is standing by their dear old sweet baby Yank. Now, before we get into this article, and I haven't read this article yet, it's going to be interesting. We've got one on Kotaku. Uh, we've got one on uh, Phantom Wire. I don't think they're really standing for Sweet Baby Inc., but they're they're definitely talking about it. But I want to give a hat tip to Lorena Creole, who put this uh, on my radar. Anyway, uh, Political Awake here on Twitter has a clip of the founder of Sweet Baby Inc. basically saying you need to threaten your bosses to include uh, DEI content in games. Uh, l listen to this. This is insane. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher-ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them. Okay, so <laughs> she is, is telling people to go to their marketing teams and terrify them. Oh my God, it would be a real shame if Twitter found out that you weren't diverse and inclusive enough. If only there were a solution to this non-existent problem. Well, you're in luck. There is. It's called Sweet Baby Inc. We create the disease and we sell you the cure. Uh. 
with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. Let's, let me run this part by you again. Your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. Wow. Okay, that is that is not something that uh, I would I would want to say out loud. You said the quiet part out loud. I would not want to say that at a summit where it's going to get clipped like it has. And uh, this was only four years ago, five years ago. I guess it's five. God, five years. Five years ago now, 2019, March of 2019. Um, the founder of Sweet Baby Inc. is telling you to put pressure on your higher ups if you're you're working in a game studio and terrify them. Tell them bad things are going to happen to them if they don't hire a firm like Sweet Baby Inc. Well, bad things have happened to them. It's called sales. Sales have happened. Bad sales have happened. Forspoken. Uh, Saints Row Reboot. Uh, Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League. Just off the top of my head, some of the games that they've been associated with. Everything that they have touched has turned to shit. Okay? They are the common denominator. While I don't think they're solely to blame, studios listening to them, thinking that they had all the answers or, or they listen to them because they're afraid of, of Twitter backlash has cost these companies hundreds of millions of dollars. Some of the studios have actually shut down uh, Saints Row. I know Embracer Group shut that studio down. I think it was Volition and uh, who else do we have? Forspoken. That was a freaking disaster. Starfield, they were involved in Starfield. Now, Starfield has a lot of problems, <laughs> but they did not help. And I guarantee you, they were probably the one, uh, they were probably the ones pushing for pronouns. Pronouns. They were pushing for the pronouns. I guarantee it. Anyway, let's go out and read this article from Kotaku, which is a dead blog walking. Uh, Geo Media at some point in time is going to shut down or sell off Kotaku. It is a money losing venture. Uh, every day, every article they publish potentially opens them up to a lawsuit, right? And I'm shocked that they haven't been sued more often. Um, I'm surprised Troy Lovett didn't sue them. I, I would have sued them for defamation. I would have been like, you're, you're calling me, basically calling me a Nazi because of some videos I published like eight years ago that have nothing to do with this game because you're mad that I'm working on a game that is going to put money in JK Rowling's pocket. That's what the whole thing was about. They're, they're just ass mad activists and they need to go away. This, this blog needs to go away. It's past its prime. Anyway, Kotaku sweet baby Yank doesn't do what some gamers think it does. No one company isn't forcing diversity into all your favorite games. No, just if you don't, if you don't call them up, terrible things are going to happen. They should be terrified of what's going to happen because you know what these people would do, right? They would organize some kind of a hashtag or something on Twitter. That This is pre-Elon Musk Twitter, and they would get your company canceled. Absolutely. This happened with Marvel Comics. There were some ass-mad indie comics creators that basically used cancel culture to get themselves jobs in the industry where they worked on underperforming, low-selling books. And they did this repeatedly. A couple of people have done it. Uh, and they basically guilted their way into the industry. And then once you get them in, you can't get them out. Sweet Baby Inc. is not the largest narrative design company in the games industry. No, but they are definitely, uh, they are definitely a common thread. Nor is it solely responsible for the characters and stories in recent high-profile release releases like uh, Alan Wake 2, God of War, Ragnarok, and Suicide Squad. But good luck telling some gamers that. Here we go, guys. Gamergate 2.0. Late last month, one of the company's consultants dis discovered a Steam group dedicated to detecting games that Sweet Baby Inc. has worked on. The purpose to encourage people to avoid those games because the group had deemed SBI was pushing a woke agenda by working toward greater diversity, equity, and inclusion. Remember, guys, I played you the clip. They need to be terrified of what will happen if they don't put those things into their game. Because Sweet Baby Inc. And, and friends, I'm sure, will we'll make sure that your studio gets, uh, gets a black eye, a public black eye. Steam Group now has more than 100,000 uh, 100, followers in its own Discord that boasts nearly 2,000 members. But this ire against Sweet Baby Inc. and DEI initiatives in general isn't new. 
In October 2023, Kiwi Farms Post shares, what are you doing on Kiwi Farms? A Kiwi Farms Post shares similar sentiments, saying the company's involvement in Remedy's award-winning 2023 action game Alan Wake 2 was possibly one of the biggest scandals in gaming history. <sighs> Conversation around Sweet Baby Inc. has ignited a fundamentally misinformed Gamergate-esque firestorm. Here we go, guys. Its employees have faced rampant harassment as a direct result. Industry figures have had to deny allegations that Sweet Baby Inc. comes in and completely changes their games. Spoke with several employees of Sweet Baby Inc. to learn what the company actually does and how the misunderstanding of its role in the industry highlights a far broader problem. Like her ass. We can't have her ass in games anymore. What bad actors think companies like Sweet Baby Inc. does. The games industry has had its fair share of struggles lately from massive layoffs to wildly expensive games like Suicide Squad falling short of expectations. Yes, and many of the massive layoffs are a direct result of gamers rejecting certain AAA titles. I'm just saying, and it's not all Sweet Baby Inks doing. They are a common thread. I think it's the, the sentiment, the fact that these people told these studios, you have to hire people like us uh, to help you avoid any kind of public black eye. And they actually caused the public black eye. Basically, protection money. You're basically paying them protection money, but it did the opposite. If you hadn't listened to them, if you hadn't hired them, chances are your game probably would have done better. If you had just created a game the gamers would have liked and kept the politics at arm's length, I, I think gamers might have enjoyed the game a little bit more. But now that they know that Sweet Baby Inc. exists and what it is that Sweet Baby Inc. and other companies as well does, and now they know they do, they're going to look for this, this going forward. And you think there are layoffs now. Just wait, because I'm sure that they have other projects in the pipeline that haven't been released yet. And I guarantee you people are going to take notice. They're going to keep track and they're going to boycott the games. I, I, we're talking, I think it's up to almost 200,000 people now. Yeah. 195,000 followers. These are steam users. The, these are people who buy games on steam and that has potentially 200,000 sales lost at 50, 60, $70 a pop. So if you're you are in charge of a AAA title and you're the head of a studio. Do the math. Is it worth it to lose that many customers? You know, to protect sweet, to protect sweet baby ink. Uh, you know, or, or are you so afraid of a, a black eye on Twitter that you will um, spurn two hundred thousand customers? And those are the ones that actually are following sweet baby ink. Detected. We don't know how many there actually are. There could be far, far more. Um, Kyle Rowley says, it's absolutely not true. The prevailing theory is that if it weren't Sweet Baby Inc., Saga Anderson would have been portrayed by a white woman. Is this true? Well, that's what they said. Even games that are widely considered to be successes are not safe from these conspiracy theories. Just a conspiracy theory. Alan Wake 2 game director Kyle Rowley, yes, yeah, said no, that wasn't going to be the case. On March 5th, I managed to spend an hour or so in the Sweet Baby Inc. detected Discord before I was booted from the space, likely because I identified myself as a, a, a Kotaku journalist. <laughs> Why the fuck would you go in there and be like, hey, everybody, I'm from Kotaku, and the misogyny and the racism is just off the charts. Does anybody want to talk to me? Oh, my God, you're kicking me out? How dare you? In it, members shared posts referencing feminist frequency founder Anita Sarkeesian. Uh, Marcus Aurelius quotes and pictures of idealized female bodies in games. Oh, my God, how dare they? One image showed several pictures of the protagonist, Eve from Stellar Blade, juxtaposed against female characters from Overwatch, Forspoken, huge failure. Uh, Sweet Baby Inc. was involved in that. And Life is Strange, embrace tradition, reject modernity, is emblazoned on the collage. How dare they? This is the most screenshot by Kotaku slash Discord. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? You got upset. You Kotaku journalist go into this discord. 
announce that you're a Kotaku journalist. And this is the fucking best thing you could come up with. This is the worst, the most offensive thing that you could find. You know who else posted something similar to this? And they, they got some backlash and that kind of chilled out a little bit. The creators of Dragonlance, they posted something similar to this. They, they posted 5e and then they posted the original party from the Dragonlance books in the 80s. And they said the exact same thing. Embrace tradition, reject modernity, and they got in trouble for that. But that's okay. Watsy still worked with them. They still sell books. Everybody loves their books. And can you believe it? Uh, a woman was a co-creator. <clears throat> Can you believe that? A woman was a co-creator. Jeez. God, they're so stupid. These people are so stupid. Almost 2,000 members. There are already a bunch of, of infiltrated people here screenshotting everything, sadly. So just keep it cool, brothers. We can't let the server or the Steam group get taken down. That's all I ask. Keep it cool. I read a post from March 4th, which was shared again on March 5th. Several people in the Discord expressed concern about Chloe's. Chloe's? Oh, my God. A term coined by members of the far right. For those suspected of being federal law enforcement officials or their informants attempting to... You just announced that you're a Kotaku journalist. You wal waltzed in this place. Hey, everybody. I'm from Kotaku. Where are all the bigots at? Show me your bigotry, boys. I mean, what the fuck? No, actually, uh, it, 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 it means that you stick out like a sore thumb. Because in this particular instance, you said you're a Kotaku journalist. You're obviously not a Fed. I don't think you're even smart enough to be a Fed, but, you know, whatever. Uh, it means you, you glow because you stick out like a sore thumb. Hey there, fellow kids, right? Your, must, your fake mustache slipped off a little bit. But when you go in and announce that you're a Kotaku journalist... I mean, what the, what the hell did you think was going to happen? Two members that spoke with me via Discord DM shared similar sentiments about why they believe the Steam page and subsequent Discord are important so they can identify games that were developed with support from Sweet Baby Inc. and make an informed decision when purchasing them. Sweet Baby Inc. is a symptom of other ideological worldviews view, that I believe have taken a hold of the Western world media and gaming as a whole, a 31-year-old member of the Discord told me. He also insisted, without providing evidence, that Sweet Baby Inc. adds race and identity group quotas to everything they're involved in. Well, I don't know if they do intentionally, but they do come across as being like sensitivity readers. And it does say that their mission statement on their own page, uh, their mission statement is that they want to bring more diversity, equity, and inclusion to games. And they're going to push for changes so games can be for everybody. And by everybody, we mean them. Basically, the people that would be offended by everything. Because games have always been for everybody. They have. Games have been for everybody forever. I mean, you go back to the early 1980s. There are Atari commercials out there. And I can't remember what the game was in particular. But there was an Atari commercial where a black mom and her daughter are playing Atari together. In like 1980 or 81. We've got grandmas playing Atari together. It wasn't until more recently that everybody's like, oh my God, it's for the toxic men. Games are for toxic men. It wasn't always that way. You know, Sweet Baby Inc. isn't forcing diversity. It's happening naturally. All right. So this is, uh, let me see. The team that worked on Suicide Squad long after the story was written, they even joined in just to write it. Uh, In-game ads, audio logs, and NPC barks. Uh, CEO... Kim Belair tells me over a video. She continues, Sweet Baby Inc. at its core is a narrative development company. That means anything from script writing to narrative design to narrative direction to story reviews. Well, again, they're sensitivity readers. They're sensitivity readers. They're consultants. One of the things that we do offer is cultural consultations or authenticity consultations. Cultural consultations. For us, that generally means we might be asked to look at a story if there's a character in it who is marginalized in a certain way and the studio wants us to connect them with a consultant who can bring a little more authenticity to it. But the perspective is never that we're coming in and injecting diversity. For the most part, it's the reverse. It's the company has created a character and they want to make that character more representative and more interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, that actually is true. 
but I can see them being like, hey, you need to do this, you need to do that, whatever. The same thing has happened with Wizards of the Coast, speaking of Dragonlance, where they relied too heavily on sensitivity readers and now Dungeons and Dragons and Magic the Gathering are, are banning words, nonsensical reasons. I mean, they're they're banning the word witchcraft, I think, or witches. Um, they're, they're, uh, banning the word slave or slavery, even if it's, if it's accurate and it's not done in like a disparaging way. Uh, they're making the drow like purple skinned now instead of black skin, because we can't do that because it's problematic. Um, we can't refer to, to characters as having a certain race. They have to have a lineage, you know, I mean, little things like this orcs are racist, Orcs are inherently racist because they think Tolkien was racist. This is the kind of seeds that they plant. Now, do I think the studios were probably going down that path to begin with? Yes, absolutely. Because if they weren't already going down that path, they wouldn't have bothered calling a company like Sweet Baby Inc. And I guarantee you, Shift Up, Shift Up is not calling Sweet Baby Inc. Hey, Sweet Baby Inc., what do you think about this girl's ass? Is it juicy enough? Do you think it's juicy enough? Is it racist of us to, to give her a big juicy ass? Is it misogynistic? Do you have any pointers for us? How can we actually what what the solution should be when you bring a company like Sweet Baby Inc. and you say, how do we sell more games? Tell us what you'd like us to do, Sweet Baby Inc. We will do the opposite and we will sell more games. So I would love to have them come in and consult in the game and they give us like all these pointers and just be like, that's fantastic. Thank you so much. I will pay you to get the fuck out of here because I'm going to take every idea that you gave me and I'm going to do the opposite because I know you're sales poison. I was going to say box office poison, but you are steam chart poison. You are poison to every game that you touch. You know, I'm sorry, but, but and again, it's not just them. It's just this mindset. You know, gamers are actually a pretty easy lot to appease. You just, you just give them what they want. Look at Helldivers 2. They did it. Do you think they had sensitivity readers on that game? Fuck no. Pow World. Did, did they bring sensitivity readers into Pow World? They fucking did not. They did not. Oh my God. Sweet baby co-founder David Bedard adds that contrary to popular belief, the people making these games want to make the experience better for all players. Well, good luck with that when you're all unemployed because everybody pretty much is, is getting fired these days, partially because of this mindset. Let's, let's do some anti-marketing and not give gamers what they actually want. Um, detractors would rather believe that there's a shadowy cabal of people forcing, forcing them to put that stuff in. They would rather believe a make-believe fairy tale than accept that. Making something more representative and more joyful for marginalized people in video games is not a zero-sum game. It doesn't make anything worse for the male character in the game, for the white character in the game. <laughs> oh, God, David, shut up. The assumption that the team members at Sweet Baby Inc. or any marginalized person for that matter can only offer up content that's based on their identity is incredibly frustrating for the team. People can't imagine that we might do anything else but DEI. It's literally on your website. That is, that is why you exist according to your own mission statement that's front and center on the website. We can't imagine that we're just talented writers, that we're talented narrative designers, and that people are hiring us because we tell good stories, because we collaborate well, because we write video games. No, they probably hired you because you threatened them, David. Your founder's like, boy, it would be a real shame if you got canceled because your game has too much sexism or misogyny in it or a joke that just isn't very current year. It'd be a real shame if her ass was too juicy we just can't do that. She she threatened. She, she I, if, if somebody if I, if I if I saw a clip of somebody making statements like that, I'd be like, I will stay as far the fuck away from you as possible because obviously you're gonna try to like blackmail our company or something. Like just you you that that sounds like something a sociopath would say. 
We're a narrative company. That's our work. We're not censors. We have no interest in false diversity or in tokenization. We have an interest in making stories better, making characters more interesting, and developing a stronger language around narrative design. Those are the things that we are really passionate about. If you're going to come for my work, you can do that. If someone says I wrote a story and you say it's not good, that's totally fine. But if you're going to come for me, at least come correct. Don't be loud and wrong, wait. If you're going to come for me, at least come correct. Don't be loud and wrong. After chatting with Sweet Baby Inc., I returned to my Discord DM with one of the members of the group rallying against them. With the help of Blair's own words, I explained what SBI actually does, its core focus on narrative work, and how DEI is only a small part of their remit. He wouldn't budge. With all due respect... It really seems like the same thing to me, but it's just, it's just a bit more hands-on. The writing process, the end goal is to insert DEI-type stuff into the project they're working on. Yes! Is it all Sweet Baby Yank's fault? No. But the fact... Okay, let me put it to you this way. It's not Sweet Baby Yank's fault, but the fact that the company, the studio, would call them in the first place is a red flag because that tells you that is what they're looking for. They're only calling them to make it more politically correct. And they're probably calling them in part because they're afraid of being canceled. They don't want to be canceled. You know, who the hell knows how this works? They, they might have campaigns against studios that don't call them. I don't know. Oh my God. This is just a joke. Dr. Stephen Strange. A Kotaku journalist. Normally this is a joke. Kotaku is nothing more than a well-curated blog site. This article is pretty good. What? Oh my God. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, I think this is Kotaku just, uh, you know, th th look, this, this subject is too big to ignore. And most of the, the respected video game websites are choosing to ignore it because there's no way to really put a good spin on it. Oh yeah. And it's also coming out that the dude that killed himself, the night in the woods guy, at the beginning of Gamergate, like his sister was involved with Sweet Baby Inc. That's coming out too. So that's not good. So that uh, ties it more to Gamergate too. I'm just saying there's a lot of weirdness around this company. And it's not just them. They are basically the embodiment of everything that gamers feel is wrong with current year video games, with especially with AAA titles. I think that's probably the most fair assessment. It's not them in particular. They are a common thread. But uh, they, it, is, it is everything everything that is wrong um, with current year gaming, according to some people. You know, AAA titles, according to some people, uh, is embodied with Sweet Baby Inc. And look, if I were a studio head and I'm looking at the numbers, just solely at the numbers, I'm going to be like, everything they've touched has turned to shit. You only get so many chances at bat. And all of these games have been critical and or commercial failures, or they've just underperformed. Almost every single one of them, with the exception of maybe Spider-Man 2. And I think the only thing Sweet Baby Inc. was involved in were like the, the side missions or something. But like, let's see, this is, uh, this is coming from Phantom Wire. Fans are blaming Gotham Knights and Suicide Squad kill the Justice League's poor stories on Sweet Baby Scandal. Do they have a point? Current state of the world is on the brink of becoming dystopian. What? People on the internet are more sensible than ever and they will discuss anything. This includes video games. Gamers are always passionate about games and franchises they love. But in recent weeks, a new kind of misguided hatred toward a specific comp... Oh, for fuck's sake. Here we go. But in recent weeks, a new kind of misguided hatred towards a specific company has been at the center of the attention. Sweet Baby Inc. is involved in many recent projects, and gamers noticed this, began speculation, and blame distribution? Is this written by AI? This, this feels like it's written by AI. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Thanks to a new viral post on X, user Drake Jojo compares all the Batman series writer staff with the Gotham Knights, the Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. According to the information he shared, the latest two games have more than double the number of writers as the Batman Arkham Saga. Gotham Knights has 14 writers compared to the seven that were in Arkham Knight. Um, same goes with Suicide Squad, which allegedly had 26, half of whom belonged to Sweet Baby Inc. Oh, yeah, but didn't that guy from Sweet Baby Inc. just say that they were uh, they were kind of hands-off and they were just kind of giving pointers? But half the writers were Sweet Baby Inc. people? 
Are these things related to the flop that was Gotham Knights and Suicide Squad kill the Justice League? Spoiler alert. No, they don't. Okay, fucking back the fucking truck up. Are these things related to the flop that was Gotham Knights and Suicide Squad kill the Justice League? Spoiler alert. No, they don't. No, they aren't. I'm sorry. The word you're looking for is aren't. Where the fuck do they find these people? What robot? This is just Lucas. This is Lucas. Lucas is, oh my God, forget this. Nobody's even commenting. Forget this. Uh, yeah, forget this. <laughs> anyway, we're done here. Uh, we're done here. I think Sweet Baby Inc. is done because everybody's laying off. They're not spending extra money. They're going to pare back. They're going to do more titles, I think, on a budget. And I don't think Sweet Baby Inc. is going to get a call. They're going to tell you they can't afford you. But in reality, they can't afford to hire you because you're probably going to tank the sales of their multi-million dollar game. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later.